and we're back with your homework examples so hopefully you've had some success going through the examples and you know referring back to your notes we're going to go through the solutions so that you know you can check your answers so here we go first example we've got this long condensed formula with not much information on bonding so this is very hard to name like this therefore we must draw this out so that we have some information to help with the naming process so the very first carbon is attached to three hydrogens, so you add three hydrogens. And I'm lazy like some organic chemists are, and I don't always write the hydrogen. Those blank spots represent hydrogens. The next carbon has two hydrogens. The next carbon has one hydrogen and a chlorine group. So this first thing here is a chlorine group. Following that is a carbon with another chlorine group, as well as this thing that's in parentheses. The, rep, the parentheses represent an attachment to the previous carbon. So C2H5. That is an ethyl group, actually. F is two carbons, so that's an ethyl group. Following that is another carbon with one hydrogen. And the thing in parentheses is attached to that, which is the methyl group. And at the end, we have a concluding terminal end of CH3. So. Looking at this, we actually have to name this now. So the very first thing we always do is find the longest carbon chain. So I'm going to see that, and it's right through the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six in the middle, and that's going to be our carbon chain. Counting up to the ethyl group gives you the same information. It gives you six carbons, which is hex. Do you see any double bonds, triple bonds? No. All that means it's single bonds, which is an alkane. So hexane is going to be our, our ending here. We see substituents now. The substituents are chlorine, chlorine, methyl, and ethyl. We have two chlorines, so we have dichloro. And those are at two numbers. We'll number that in just a second. We also have a meth, or methyl group, which will be at a number. And we also have an ethyl group that'll be at a number. So let's go ahead and number these so that our substituents have the lowest number possible. And when we number, all we need to do is initially look at it. There are more uh, substituents on the right-hand side of this formula, so let's just go ahead and number from the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Numbering that way allows for our methyl to be on the second carbon, our ethyl to be on the third carbon, and both of our chlorine groups are on three and four. So let's go ahead and write that out in the entire format now. We have to write it in alphabetical order. So the C, M, and the E, we take into account for alpha order. So we have three, four, dichloro. And we have to hyphen, put the hyphens between numbers and words and, or letters. So three, four, Dichloro three ethyl two methyl and then you just attach the hexane at the end. No dashes, nothing like that. So hopefully you got that one correct. Next we're given the name and we need to write out the formula. So I really like these because I get to choose how I want to write it and I give it, I'm giving all the clues I need. So the very first thing you see is hex E. So hex is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbon chain, it's an E, so it's an alkene. That means it has a double bond, and only one double bond. The double bond is, is told to you in location by the number in front of hexene. That means we have a double bond after carbon number three. One, two, three, four, five, six, carbon number three is where that double bond exists. After that, it's all easy. We have a methyl group at carbon number two. So carbon number two has a methyl group hanging off of it. We have an ethyl group at carbon number four. So a carbon four has an ethyl group hanging off of it. And you can see ethyl as C2H5. You also could write ethyl as CH2. CH3, which is equivalent to C2H5. So it doesn't matter to me, either way it works. So all these empty spots that we don't have anything attached, we also need to remember that there are hydrogens there. 
because all carbons want four things attached to them, four bonds. So this first one will have one, two, three carbons, or excuse me, hydrogens there. The second one will have another hydrogen. The third one will have another hydrogen. The fourth one has fill, is filled with four bonds already, so there's no need for extra hydrogens. The fifth one needs two more hydrogens. The sixth one needs three more hydrogens. So if you fill all the hydrogens in, that would be your structural formula, which is great. But I'm gonna ask you to condense further down. We're gonna crunch this down into its condensed structural formula. So we have a, a carbon with three H's. The next one is a carbon with one H and a substituent, which is a methyl group. The next one is a carbon with a hydrogen attached, yet it is double bonded, so we draw a double bond and the carbon that it is attached to. The carbon that it is attached to has a, a, a weird uh, substituent, which is the ethyl, C2H3, five, it's a five. After that, it's easy because all you have is a carbon with two H's and a carbon with three H's. Go back and count, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's our hex, which is hexene. We have a double bond, which is the ene and the hexene. Every single time you have a substituent, you're gonna wanna put it in parentheses. That parentheses signifies that this is attached to the previous carbon and that this is attached to the previous carbon. That's gonna really help you when you're translating between structural and condensed formulas. This one, similar to the previous example, we have heptane. Heptane has seven carbons, so let's go ahead and draw that out. Seven carbons, and it's an ane, it's a hexane. That's all single bonds, which we have represented already. We also have two methyls attached. So those two methyls are gonna be attached on the third carbon, so I'm gonna number these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The third carbon has been filled up with two substituents. The rest of these carbons are naked steel. They need their hydrogens around them. So we need to go ahead and add those. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. So there's our structural formula, condensing this which you, you will be asked probably on the, on the I don't wanna say EOC, on the AP exam, you're gonna see some examples that will say, write this in the condensed formula. Same thing we've been doing. You've got a carbon with three H's. You've got a carbon with two H's. You've got a carbon with two substituents. And you write methyl with a subscript of two on the outside to represent that. You've got another carbon with two H's. Carbon, two H's, carbon, two H's, carbon, three H's. And then if you want to check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we have hep, which is our given example, heptane. This structural formula has a lot going on. It's got a branched pattern, so we need to recognize where is the longest continuous chain of carbons. If you want to count, think to yourself, hopefully you've already done this, but the longest chain is not this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven carbons. If you look really closely, you'll see that there's something bigger, and that's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is where I usually will highlight or circle or box my longest chain of carbons, and everything hanging off of that is a substituent. So we've got one, two, three, four, five substituents here. We've got five things we need to recognize their location and their names. So these substituents are chloro, bromo, dimethyl, and ethyl. So all of these will have numbers in the front Di will obviously have two, and we need to go ahead and number our carbon chain now. Oh, one thing I didn't do yet is write octane. 
and I'm writing octane because there are no double bonds or triple bonds present, therefore it's all single bonds. Whenever we number, we're going to want to number so that our substituents have the lowest possible numbers, and I'm going to tell you, after you do a little trial and error, you're going to number from the left to the right. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. So chloro has number 2, bromo has number 3. The methyls are on the same carbon, so there are four, four dimethyl. The ethyl is on carbon number five. So we take all of this and we put it into its long name in alpha order. So alpha order means you look at these, chlor, E, met, and F. That order will be B, C, E, M. So our final answer is... 3-bromo, 2-chloro, 5-ethyl, continuing here, 4-4 four, four, with your comma, dimethyl, and then finish it off with the name of the, the hydrocarbon, which is octane. So 3-bromo, 2-chloro, 5-ethyl, 4-4-dimethyl octane. Woo. All right, so getting down, we have one more, or another structural formula to add here. These are easy, like I said, because you get to draw it how you wish, and everyone should be drawn the same because there's only one right answer. But in the butene example, we've got but, but is 4, ene is a double bond. So we've got four carbons, and there's a double bond at carbon number one, so we put that double bond right there. There's a, th a methyl group at number three, so one, two, three, four. You've got a methyl group at number three. You also have two fluoros or two fluorines at the fourth carbon. So you've got, I'll put fluoro, fluoro. So that one right there, that's the, that is the structural formula. We do need to go ahead and put in our four or excuse me, our uh, H's, so that each carbon has four attachments or four bonds. So the very first one, you've got two H's here. The second one, you have one H. The third one, you have another H. The fourth one, you have another H. So writing this in condensed format, you have C2, excuse me, CH2, double bond, CH. And then you have your third carbon with a hydrogen on it as well as a substituent, which is a methyl group. And then your final carbon has one hydrogen and two fluorines. Writing it with the double bond is important, and your methyl group is important. In this example here, we're given the condensed formula, so we want to go ahead and write out the structural one so we, we can then name it in the appropriate way. So the very, very beginning looks a little weird. So we've got two methyl groups that are attached to a carbon. And the only reason that these are written in the front is because usually you want to write things so that you've got the substituents hanging off. And so it's representing the fact that you've got these attached here. So you've got a, a carbon with two methyl groups, and then it's filled all, also with the hydrogen, which is given in the above formula. Your next carbon has a hydrogen and a double bond, so that carbon is filled up with its four bonds. On the back side of the, hydro, of the uh, double bond is another carbon with one hydrogen and a CH3 after that. So this one in the formula looks a little weird. When you look at the structural way of writing it, it looks much better and it's easier to name. So numbering here, you've got to find the longest carbon chain. And I will tell you that you've got to remember to prioritize your double bond. So it's going to go first. It's going to go at the beginning. So we're going to number from the right to the left. So numbering will give you one, two, three, four, five. And even though that looks like it's just a, a methyl group, it's actually part of the main carbon chain. So the condensed formula can be confusing unless you actually write it out. 
So it's in the chain. So anything on the end is usually in the chain because it, it flows with the, with the rest of the carbon chain. So now let's name this. We've got a methyl group hanging here and we've got a double bond after carbon number two. So we know we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have pent. We have pentene because we have a double bond here. So that's the alkenes. The double bond is that carbon, excuse me, after carbon number two. So it's two pentene. And we've got this methyl group. Methyl is a substituent. So it's gonna go in the front. The methyl is off of carbon number four. So we have four methyl. And so each of those, of course, are separated by a hyphen. All right. So if you have any questions, just let me know. You know I'll be at school.